Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech University, and in this video we're going to have some fun with linearity. In this video, we'll look at the definition of linearity and do an example applied to a linear system. Then there'll be a second video where we look at nonlinear systems. So to get started, recall the state input-output pair notation that was introduced in a previous video. And it looked like this. If you know x, the state at t0, and u of t, the input, for all t greater than or equal to t0, then you can calculate the output, y of t, for all t greater than or equal to t0. So you can think of this as being the dynamical system. And the dimensions of these quantities are n by 1 for the state vector, m by 1 for the input, and r by 1 for the output. So now for the definition of linearity. So a dynamic system, and I'll use this abbreviation for system, is linear if for every t0, every initial condition that you can possibly imagine, and for any two state input-output pairs, both the properties of additivity and homogeneity hold. And when that happens, we say that this system satisfies superposition. So now what we'll do is look at additivity and homogeneity separately. So a dynamic system satisfies additivity for every t0 and any two state input-output pairs, and we'll denote those with subscripts i and j, that if we sum the two initial condition vectors, xi plus xj, and we sum the inputs, ui plus uj, then the dynamic system output is equal to the sum of the two outputs of those two state input-output pairs individually. So it would be yi plus yj. Now let's look at homogeneity. So a dynamic system satisfies homogeneity if, again, for every initial time, t0, and any state input-output pair, and any scalar constant alpha, if you multiply the initial state xt0 by alpha, and you multiply the input also by alpha, then the output of that state input pair is equal to alpha times the output y of t that you would get from just the x, t0, u of t state input-output pair. Now let's go ahead and look at an example. It's a first order differential equation and it's time varying. We have a coefficient in front of the x of t term that is 3 times t. And the output y of t is equal to the state x plus u of t. Now keep in mind, u of t could be any function of time. It could be sine t, t cubed, etc. Now the way that we're going to analyze linearity is we're going to go ahead and get a general solution for y of t and then explore homogeneity and additivity. And the way that we'll get the general solution is by an integrating factor. Now for this system, the integrating factor, this cursive looking m, and it's m of t, is equal to e, and we integrate over t, and the integrating
20 grand is 3 times tau, which is this piece. And if we do that, we'll get e to the 3 halves t squared. But now we don't really need that actual value of the integrating factor to write down a y of t. That is, we know from our work in solving first order differential equations with integrating factors that x of t is just going to be that integrating factor evaluated at t0 over n t times x t0 plus n over the integrating factor times the integral from t0 to t n tau e tau d tau that's x of t, and then y of t is exactly the same thing, x of t, plus a u of t tagged onto it. And I'll write that out one time. And there it is. There's our output y of t for a general u of t function. Now let's go ahead and look at homogeneity first. And what I'll do is I'll slide this down just a little bit so that we can keep looking at our y of t while we go through the motions of homogeneity. And just remember that this, and I'll use some abbreviated notation, is what homogeneity is all about. We have, I think we're probably still in t0 right there. We have an initial state at t0 and a u of t for all time, and that gives us alpha times y of t for all time. And remember, y of t is the output if our initial state was just x and our input was just u. So what we'll do now is we will rewrite this expression two times and see if those two expressions are equal. And the first time we write it, we'll just replace every x of t0 with alpha times x t0 and every u with alpha times u. And on the other side, we'll just take this expression in the box and multiply it by alpha. So here we go. I'll do that one first. And so now I'm replacing every x of t0 with alpha times x t0. And here comes the last piece. alpha times u of tau, d tau, plus alpha times u of t. Now the question is, are these two expressions equal? Well, let's take a look. Certainly we can take this alpha here and, and put it inside the uh, square bracket and compare it to these two terms. This one is certainly equal to this when we bring the alpha inside. And similarly, if we look at this integral and bring the alpha inside that, we get exactly this integral. And finally, the u of t times alpha, of course, is just alpha times u of t. So indeed, they are equal. And so this dynamic system satisfies homogeneity. Now, that gets us half the way towards linearity, and now we have to look at additivity. Now, to explore additivity, what we'll do is, is we'll consider three state input output pairs. So now we're going after additivity, and we're going to define these three things. I'm going to use this rather shorthand notation, and I'll use xa and ua for my subscripts i and j that I introduced in the uh, previous page. XA and UA gives YA and XB at T0 and UB gives YB and then finally we'll define XC at T0 as being equal to XA at T0 plus XB at T0 and similarly UC is equal to ua plus ub. And that 
produces what we'll, what we'll call line C. To explore additivity, what we need to do is to see if XA T0 plus XB T0 and UA plus UB yields YA plus YB. Another way to describe this check, this kind of a check, is if YA plus YB is equal to the YC that we defined up here. To do that, we're just going to use the same approach from the previous page that we used for homogeneity. We're just going to rewrite that general solution for an XB, an XA, and then the sum of XA and XB, and certainly the same for the U's. So here we go. Okay, so we have these three expressions written out. In this first line, I've just replaced every occurrence of x0 with xa, and every occurrence of u with ua. And this is our b case right there. Every occurrence of x0 has an xb in it now, and the u's are replaced with a ub right there. And in the third case, which is this, we replace every occurrence of x0 with xa plus xb, and with the u's, ua plus ub. And now we just have to see if these two expressions on the left are equal to the combined expression on the right. So first we look at this piece. And clearly, these two terms, when summed together, yield this one. So that's good. Now let's look at the integral term. That's here. And again, we can combine those two integrals here and here, and we get exactly this term. So everything is equal there. And finally, the last piece, the ua plus the ub, is obviously equal to ua plus ub. So it checks. Boom. And the system does satisfy additivity. And so we can conclude that this dynamic system is linear. Now, I said at the beginning of this video that we were going to have fun with linearity, and so let's do that now. Consider this system. It's not a dynamic system. It's the equation of a line. Y is equal to mx plus b, where m and b are just scalar constants. And so it might look something like this. Well, let's go ahead and see if this system is linear. And we'll take a quick peek and start by looking at additivity. So yA is equal to m xA plus b. yB is equal to m xB plus b. I'm looking at the two cases, the xA and the xB. And now I'm going to form this yC, which is m times the quantity xA plus xB, again plus b. And our check in this case is YA plus YB equal to YC. And there we get MXA plus B plus MXB plus B. And is that equal to M times the quantity XA plus XB plus B? And the answer is, that cancels out, cancels. But we end up with two b's here and one b there. So that it doesn't matter. And so our conclusion is that this system is not linear. It's interesting because it's the equation of a line. But what we can do is we could let a new variable, call it y tilde, equal to y minus b. And then this expression just becomes y tilde is equal to m. And if we plot that x and y, it goes right to the origin. 
and you can explore this one on your own, but this is linear. This is important because what's been demonstrated is that by a particular substitution, we can make the system satisfy linearity, and that can happen with dynamical systems also. We'll explore that a little bit in that second video where we also look at nonlinear systems. Now, this is a very formal approach to checking linearity, but we can also do it a lot of times by inspection. So if you have a differential equation with constant or time-varying coefficients of the dependent variables, uh, or the outputs, or the inputs, and they appear as terms such as x triple dot, and x double dot, x, y, u, etc., then the system is linear. But if you have terms that look like x squared, or y cubed, or the sine of u, then that system would be considered nonlinear. However, you might be able to make a substitution, like you did in this simple case of a line, to make it linear. So let's just do a quick few examples using this observation or this um, inspection technique. Okay, so here we have five different dynamic systems. We'll just step through them real quick and check if they're linear or nonlinear by inspection. So in this case, what we have is a time varying differential equation. Um, the coefficients in front of x double dot, x double dot, and x are all constant or time varying, and there's no um, funny nonlinear terms in either the u or the y. So I would conclude from all of that that this system is linear. Over here, we have a time-varying differential equation, but the uh, dependent variable x dot is, does not appear as just a standalone term. It's sine of x dot. So that one is nonlinear. And what do we have here? The left-hand side looks fine. Uh, it's linear in x, x dot, and x triple dot. But we have this pesky u squared over here. So this one would, technically speaking, be nonlinear. And here again, the left-hand side looks fine. It's a time-varying differential equation. But the output equation has a nonlinearity in it. And the last one, uh, the left-hand side, the beautiful-looking uh, constant coefficient differential equation, the right-hand side is sine of t. Now, you might be tempted to say, well, that's nonlinear. But sine of t is really just u of t. And as long as the nonlinearity isn't in u, but in just in time, that system is still linear. So for instance, if this had been equal to the sine of u, then it would have been nonlinear. And there you have it. So just to summarize, we started off by going through the definition of linearity, and that took us down the road of additivity and homogeneity and superposition. Then I did a quick example of a linear dynamic system, and then finally just reviewed some techniques to determine linearity by inspection. Again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech University, and thanks for watching.